and welcome to episode 158 of The, the Eldritch Podcast. Podcast. I am Margaret. I'm Jack. And hello. Oh, high energy today. I'm always high energy. Yes. Never yes, stops. Yeah. The high energy never goes away. I took a really funny photo of Jack and the dog today. Can I put it in? Not on that. Not on the YouTube video. Oh. Not of me sleeping. <laughs> no, no. It's uh, the one of you in the corner. I'm asleep, aren't I? No, no. No, that's not when you're asleep. I was, no, no, you weren't asleep. You're just staring into the abyss. Oh, we got to show him now. I can't remember which one I don't remember. The one where you had to face his... I took a photo of the dog. It's up to Jack if he puts it in on. I don't know which I don't know which photo was on about. <laughs> I will review in editing and decide. <laughs> you may or may not be looking at a photo of me looking into the abyss right now. Basically, with I, the dog in the foreground. I, I went to take a cute photo of the dog because he was laying funny, and um, Jack was just waking up in the background. So it was that one. Dog sleeps in the bed. Basically. Yeah, dog sleeps in the bed. And um, in the top left corner, there's just. I didn't realize his face was in it. Just Jack's face, just, <laughs> just staring into the void. It's so funny. So that decision's up to Jack <laughs> about whether it's on the screen or not. Uh, made I'll me have giggle. a look at it again. It made me giggle. I did some weird things on my sleep last night. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah, yeah. One of them was uh, I was asleep, <laughs> asleep, and she grabbed my elbow and I, and I pulled it away and I was like, what are you doing? And, and I, was I was like, what? You were like, what? And I was like, you grabbed me. And I was you like, were I like, didn't. No, you didn't. I was like, you did. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, nah. Uh, I, I don't was think like, I did. But you did, though. So please don't <laughs> grab me while I'm asleep again. <laughs> See, I have no recollection of that whatsoever. But I don't have recollection of the other thing. <laughs> I woke up and in my mind. Yeah, yeah in I, your dreams. In my dreams, I always do this thing where I think I'm awake and yeah. Jack's doing something yeah. weird. I had a dream that i was awake looking at you in bed and you were thinking things and in your head like i could physically see like your temples yeah, yeah, yeah. light up when you said something and i could hear it in my head and i was like oh my god he doesn't know i can hear his thoughts so in real life i wake you up and mm. i'm like i can hear your voice in my head <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> everything you're thinking i can hear I it can in hear my it. head i can hear it in my head and literally he he <laughs> looks at me he says nothing and he just turns around yeah what do you want me to do it's like <laughs> five in the morning i'm i'm asleep and uh, you say the words yeah. i can hear your voice in my head <laughs> look i'm not gonna say i know exactly what's going on and i know 100 percent that this is a dream yeah. and you cannot hear my your yeah. voice in my head but yeah. <laughs> that's 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 the cards i'm dealt on a nightly basis so yeah um I, it's been a while since i've done anything particularly weird in my dreams yeah I yeah, think. yeah the grabbing me was i have grab... no idea why i did that it was scary i don't remember it, it wasn't like it wasn't just like a, it, she went <laughs> and she grabbed my elbow and i was like what are you doing <laughs> did you think i was like waking you up for yeah. something i have oh, i don't remember any of it I don't remember and, and that at all. I remember your face. You were like, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I think you're making this up, actually. actually. <laughs> <laughs> you're the one who has a history of doing weird things, actually, in your sleep. Uh, so, yeah. Hey, s been sleeping strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We slept far I slept well, though. Oh, I slept terrible. I slept what, horribly. last night? Yeah. Did you? Yeah, I think it's because I kept doing weird things and waking myself up. Yeah. And you know when you are you fall asleep and then you don't feel like you've been asleep yeah. and you're like, oh my God, I haven't slept. De definitely have. I had to ask you the other night, didn't I? Yeah, you, it was you were like, like, have I been asleep? It was, it was light outside and I was in that sort of like dream state where I was like, I don't know if I've been asleep yet. Mm -hmm. And that's really upsetting because it's so early now. I was like, have I been asleep? And you were like, yeah. yeah. And I was like, okay, that makes me feel better. Yeah, so I felt like to sleep. And I know because I couldn't sleep. I just stayed on my phone. Yeah. I do this thing where, to be fair, it's, it's, it's a flip of a coin. When I can't sleep, I can go on TikTok for maybe like 20 minutes and mm. it will knock me out. Or I'll go on TikTok and I'll be awake for and it's hours. Jova, yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And it was one of those nights where... Yeah, I'm never really like that. I never really struggle to like... 
Like, I will never go on my phone. Yeah. Like, yeah. even if I can't sleep, I'll just lay there. You don't have an internet addiction, though. <laughs> yeah, I like. I will just lay there and just be like, it'll happen eventually. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it takes a long time. But I yeah. usually, like, yeah, I feel like we've both struggled sleeping recently. Yeah, it's because it's been really warm. Like, since we've done the move, basically this room that we're filming in and the room that we stream in, this was two rooms. We took a wall out and this was our master bedroom. It's by far the biggest room upstairs. Mm-hmm. Um. We obviously moved around and we did that, I think, kind of in the new year when it was still quite cold. And no, it was after the new year because we started streaming in the new year and we started streaming downstairs. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. So it was like a couple of months into the year, yeah, maybe like yeah. March, February, April, March, maybe. yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't hot. And obviously now we're in the peak of summer in UK and it's boiling and our houses in UK keep the heat in. We've moved into a smaller room and I think we're really struggling with managing the heat in the room it is so hot because when it's me you and the dog and then we've had the tv on and like our phones are charging and stuff it just gets so warm just in get the room warm so warm so i think we're struggling because of that and listen the blinds in our bedroom terrible not great absolutely awful so we <sighs> open the window and they're the type of blinds that like there's a tiny bit of wind and they're like oh yeah and my mom is chief put a blinder blind, upper. yeah so what you <laughs> just spat everywhere you just spat everywhere i just spat everywhere no. sorry about that yeah she's chief blinder put her up her yeah so i'm gonna just ask her if she can put some blinds up yeah. she's really good at it yeah. yeah and sometimes she'll pay for them yeah oh, <laughs> oh. oh. sometimes she's like ah, i just bought them for you oh. don't worry about it i'm like oh yeah you shouldn't have no one <laughs> no one tells you being an adult Buying blinds and curtains, so expensive. So expensive and so unbelievably complicated. So complicated. Oh my it's God. It's like, what's working the, out drop? the drop? And working it's like, out the size. I don't know what the drop is. I know, I know. What you are you have talking to get, about? Sometimes you have to get them custom made if your windows aren't like a standard size. I don't and like, care about you have that. to then, like for blinds, you have to put all the hardware in. And they're so expensive. They're so blinds expensive. Are, like, a, like, if you want a decent, decent blinds, set of blinds, aren't, them, aren't those yeah those things yeah those rattly rickety old yeah. things terrible dreadful it's so expensive gosh everything's so expensive god being an adult is expensive <laughs> it is it is oh the dog looks so cute i don't right want to pay for blinds oh uh anything else i i don't really think there's... we played valorant yeah all day yesterday all day all, all day. day long you know last time i saw you i was like i'm a valorant god now I rescind that statement <laughs> no, 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 after no, 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 some no. of my performances yesterday. Yeah, you had a couple of roughies. You had a couple yeah. of rough games. But the thing is, like even pros have rough games. You can't yeah. you can't beat yeah. yourself up for having no, a rough game. I know. Now and then. I know. And you know we're going against harder teams now. Because for the I most think, part, yeah. we five stack. So riots matchmaking is terrible. Yeah, like I don't get the matchmaking. Like it goes iron, bronze, gold, platinum, diamond. Ascendant, Ascendant, Immortal, Radiant. Mm. Right now, you're in silver. Yeah, just in silver. And like when I was at the top end of gold, like uh, like uh, bottom end of platinum, like uh, there might be a lobby where some I would go up against some diamond players, mm. like people two two ranks above yeah. me. Yeah. And you know I could hold my own against them, and I could play pretty well against them. They wouldn't dominate me or anything mm-hmm. like that. But yesterday, me, we're playing with a couple of people who are in bronze and silver. And it gave us it two, gave us two, two games diamond with diamond people. players. Yeah, it, it was really, really, really I will hard say, games. I did beat them. Yeah, yeah, you did in both matches. Yeah, you did. How about the rest Personally. of us? Personally, <laughs> how about the rest of us? <laughs> but that's the thing. The rest of you <laughs> just, just got just got Ab- destroyed, absolutely decimated, and it's just unfair. And it I just it's unfair. just like people are just gonna like be turned off the game so hard yeah that's why i stopped playing because the matchmaking is just so bad I-, I stopped playing initially because first of all hate people yeah hey hate men telling me what to do yeah uh and hate speaking and being hated because my- i'm a woman yeah. uh and also the matchmaking's horrible it's so absolutely bad. horrible and there was people <laughs> yeah there's just like there's loads of smurfs and there's there's, there's loads of cheaters yeah and, loads of cheaters and then it's just like you're pairing diamond players up against bronze players. It's yeah, just it's like, what do you expect? Like, yeah, that's just so. They're what? So, silver, gold, platinum. That's a three rank yeah. in between difference. Yeah. They're five ranks apart with yeah. three ranks in between. Yeah, horrible. That's just too much. And they think they can compensate for it by putting us against iron players. Hey, surprise, surprise. Iron players are Smurf. Yeah, the iron, iron player yeah. played better than 
anyone else. Anyone else on that one team, yeah. yeah. It's so frustrating. It's just like it went. It was like me, me and the diamond player, mm. then the iron one player. It's yeah. just like you just bought that account. Yeah, it stinks. <laughs> Absolutely stinks. Dreadful. Uh, so yeah, we haven't done anything really apart from play Valorant, play Val. um, which has been good for me. Uh, I just needed a little bit of a break. I think uh, I just yeah. needed some time to chill. To be fair. We've been on our grind a lot. Here we We've have, yeah, been, yeah. Um, gosh. Reaching out to people. Yeah, no uh, one tells you. Communicating with sponsorships and stuff. No one tells you how to do this. No. And obviously, <laughs> of course, there's incredible resources online. There is there is a lot of creators who do who do talk you through it to a certain point. It, it, it's kind of like anything on the internet, right? Any coach on the internet, they'll give you all like the basic stuff for free. But to really succeed, they're like, "Hey, buy my course. Hey, buy, buy my, my yeah. ebook." Uh, and w- which, by the way, I totally respect that. That is a very yeah, valid you're business. Make your money somehow, don't yeah, you? that's so valid. Uh, and and you know the information they do give you is is valuable. Yeah, some of it is really good. But man, having to figure out, and I I'm very aware, by the way, that this is totally such a niche thing and kind of first world problems. Having to work out how to pitch yourself as two idiots on the internet to brands, two very hard. very unserious, ninety yeah. percent of the time <laughs> individuals. Very, very, very. To hard. be like, hey, sponsor us. Yeah. We're f- funny. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and genuinely, because uh, uh, we're always transparent with you, having to work out how much to charge. How much to charge? Oh gosh. God. Oh gosh. And everything is so different, and <sighs> without knowing what your peers charge as well, it's so hard. And I'm like, we could easily reach out to some friends and ask. Uh, to be fair, um, one, of our, one of our Twitch friends, Bex, uh, Shadow Bell, she's helped so much with all of this. Uh, she's really given a good insight. Uh, we could totally reach out to more people and ask, but like, that Scary. feels weird as well. Scary. <laughs> that feels strange too. Yeah. So yeah, we're working really hard yeah, we're trying right now, best. trying to get in contact with you know, people we think you'd really like. Being honest, we're trying to get in contact with a lot of D and D TTRPG adjacent things. Yeah, uh, just to because see if they're interested. That would because that's what you, that's, <laughs> that's yeah that, yeah. Um, so yeah, if anyone has any experience with mm-hmm. this, if anyone has any recommendations, please let us know. Yeah, because. I have no idea. Yeah, big time. I don't know. I really don't. We have <laughs> no idea. Yeah, you know, so many of these videos are like find a contact in a company. I'm like, how would you do that? How? It's how do like I do that? Some some companies do have like oh for bro- like for creator. Yeah, like 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 Logitech stuff. Like yeah. get in touch with this person. Some just don't have anything. Yeah, and it's just like there's a support ticket. And yeah, it's just like yeah. Then you go through the support ticket, and then someone's like, this isn't anything to do with me, but I'll pass it on. And it's just like, well, I. Hope you do. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's that's honestly all we've been up to. Yeah. To be honest with you, been doing some of that. Been playing a lot of Val. Yeah. Been yeah. Good stuff. Been been trying to chill out. Within a comes bit. out in three weeks. Let's go. Less than three weeks now because you're watching this on Thursday. Yeah. And uh, that's about it. Anything else? No. No. <laughs> really yeah. not. Yeah. Well, before we get into the video, hey, if you like us, could you like the video? Could you like, comment, hey. subscribe, and hit the bell? <laughs> that would mean a lot to us. If this is your first time here, oh gosh, hello. In uh, the comments, say uh, <laughs> scrungly McDungly. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Uh, hit if, me with a scrungly McDungly. If you like this vibe, please feel free to subscribe. We'd love to have you. Yeah. Check us out on Twitch. We live stream every Friday, every Sunday, every other Tuesday. Correct. We do a lot of this. We do a lot of this. We do a lot of yapping. We do yeah. a lot of advice. We do a lot of ask me anything. Yeah. We do a lot of just like fun D&D yeah. activities. We just, we just hang out. Talk a lot about food. Yeah. Yeah, it's good, we do it's, talk a lot it's about good food. times. It's good times. And of course, thank you so much to our wonderful patrons. We have a Patreon. It ranges from two pounds to eight pounds fifty. I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> two pounds, eight pounds fifty. Um, of all sorts obligation. of perks. Yeah. The link is in the description. Indeed. So is the link to our merchandise. Neither of us have got on right now. No. But if you want to go and pick up some merch, it's uk. Patreons do get 10% off. Yes. Thank you very much. Indeed. I love you all. Yeah. Dearly with my whole heart. And with that, let's get into topic. Let's get into topic. Thank you so much to all our patrons over at Patreon. You have no idea how much we appreciate your support. If you want to support us over at Patreon and gain access to our exclusive content. Like our D&D campaign updates and our extra monthly live streams. Click the link in the description. More about Patreon at the end of this video. Thank you. All right. So, uh, I'm sure I mentioned this last time. Listen, 
I'm try I'm trialing out a new thing. I'm trialing out uh just trying to react to just one big mega thread on D on Reddit. On Reddit. Right? And this one is I think it's quite fun. This is good fun one. And we talk about this quite a lot on stream. Yeah, like when yeah. we've had when we've had like Ask Us Anything's on streams, like this topic comes up quite a lot. Yeah, it does. Because it I does. think people like to look out for it. And it's just funny to hear some of the things, yeah. to be honest. So the topic of today's video is DMs, what are your red flags? <laughs> uh, so the first one is players who try to win D and D. Ooh boy, players that try and win D and D. See, I've, I think I struggle with this concept massively because I, I think I realized at the begin in the beginning, at the very, very inception of me playing D and D, that if I'm <laughs> rolling a dice. There's a chance I'm going to lose. Yeah, totally. And I feel like I grasped onto that and was quite excited of the concept of losing. Yeah, same. Um, because I think I, I think I think as well because I watch Critical Role and I think a lot of people who got into D from D and D from Critical Role is they never get upset when they roll badly. They yeah. just turn it into a funny RP moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I really <clears throat> love that concept of well, I tried something and it failed, but it's something still happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. And you know what? I think the whole trying to win D and D. I get a picture of someone who tries to outsmart the DM, oh, someone who's combat. a rules lawyer, someone who tries to cheese something and complains a lot when it doesn't work. Like that that's my general picture of someone who tries to win D and D. I I have a very negative picture. I have an extremely negative picture of people yeah, who like to yeah. try and win D and D. And you know, I, I, obviously there's nuance to everything, mm -hmm. right? Uh you can if you're playing at a table let's say you you level up via xp yeah and you the only the person who gets the killing blow gets the xp i can understand at that point the idea of trying to win D. &D. Mm, yeah, i get yeah. that but uh, at our table if anyone had this this uh, what's the word this mindset mindset it, it, you couldn't with the whole like xp thing with trying to win D, &D i feel like you'd get given a quest and oh there's a dragon and then it's like right okay Let's go into the woods and kill a bunch of bars for 17 sessions until we've killed enough bars so we can outlevel this dragon. Like and an MMO, just, yeah. And then just walk in and yeah, just one-shot yeah, yeah, it. It's yeah, yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. I feel like that it gives me that vibe. Yeah, and that's that's a valid way to play. And I'm sure that people... Is, are, is that a valid well, way to play? I'm sure there are people who play like that. I'm sure there's games that are completely XP-based yeah. that run more like an MMO where people are like, yeah, okay. And you logistically go, okay, we need this much XP to get to this point. Mm -hmm. What is the most efficient route to do it? And and they do it. I feel like baiting out of your dungeon master that you're going to go and fight a young white dragon, <laughs> finding out what CR it is, and then being like, okay, let's just go and farm stuff until it's easy. Oh, like, yeah, that's... That. It, look, everything is a viable way to play because viable means you can play that yeah, way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it fucking fun for anyone? I don't know. Well, you know, if the DM... The dungeon master? Well, well you know, you're saying it as in... Um, if they're trying to be like, oh, we're going to bait out the DM and then we're going to do this. But if the DM's like, yeah, this is the type of game we're playing, yeah, then yeah. I don't see the problem. I think, yeah. I think, yeah, I don't see the problem in that at all. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I disagree. I don't, I think that is like, finding out from your dungeon master what would be like, what you're going up against and then going away, doing nothing but farming things to make it trivial yeah. would be the <clears> most, <throat> boring boring thing to do on earth i think oh yeah to you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah oh yeah. totally oh, yeah, yeah. oh but god all i yeah. can speak of is my opinion oh yeah 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 but you know if there's people who want to do that and everyone's happy it's none but, of our business yeah yeah but i think i don't think i i couldn't see a world where that would make the dungeon master happy but what if Personally. the dungeon master's like this is the type of game we're playing then that's fine like you know i think you know should is that is there a better system for you than D and D? Most Mo probably. Most, most definitely. Yeah. But getting back onto the topic is with the, uh, you know, like, oh, it's a troll. Let's kill it with fire and stuff yeah. like that. Like using like, and I understand that adventurers might have knowledge, but then using that knowledge to maybe there's something about that in here. Try and outsmart the DM or try and break the combat. Yeah, I think can be quite rough as well. There's something about that in this. Yeah. in this actually, yeah. players but that try and win D and D. 
there's loads of different ways to try and win D and D. Yeah, and I think I think a lot of the time I think it saps a See, large amount of fun out of it. I completely agree. I I think there's also that we want to win D and D that's on a level of people not <clears throat> wanting to fail and therefore kind of pushing things in a direction like scared to fail yeah Yeah. like like scared to fail like if i fail i have failed yeah do you know what i mean yeah or like if we fail there's going to be like i don't know horrible world ending consequences and and therefore like we lose yeah so i i understand how that can happen like on a subconscious level someone not wanting to lose but i think D D isn't a game you can win i don't I think, yeah, I don't think you can truly win it. I think you can participate and have good outcomes. I think you can succeed. I think you can succeed. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you can truly win. I think you can get what you want as well. Because can you win a narrative? I guess that's the question. Like, can you win a narrative? Like, when it's just a narrative, like, we're going to go on this adventure and what will happen will happen. It's just like, there is not really truly a you win or you lose. You can have a happy ending. Yeah, Like I I I agree. You can have a happy ending, but I don't think... You know, I, I guess, you know, some people could be like, oh, we won because we killed the monster. Oh, yeah. we won because we killed the it's like You lost a bunch of stuff on the way, so. Yeah. Like, did you truly win? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Or did you come out on top? Yeah. 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 Coming out on top is probably a better way to phrase it. I, I, I totally agree. Yeah, and I agree. I, I, I can picture the type of person who wants mm-hmm. to win D&D mm-hmm. and it's not good. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, like, <laughs> like my Roman Empire. <laughs> come on tell them tell them again <laughs> there's gonna be so many comments like my please Empire, send me this I, tiktok I, I, I don't even know if i can find it. i think Margaret might be able to find it <laughs> but there's a dm who's just who's sat behind the dm <laughs> screen just looking dejected dejected as this person's just like oh well i do this and then I, they throw the potent at the dm they screen throw the they, thro- they throw the physical dice they throw the dice and they're table. like oh well you fail and then oh now we're all on the positive energy plane and we're all healing for this much oh you didn't plan for this that's on you yeah, well, and i'm the, like the dm the literally the dm looks at this person and just goes fuck you dude yeah fuck you and then the players the player looks to everyone else and is like what he what? knew i had this he knew i had oh. this he should have planned for it it's just like terrible brother we've oh, got God. so much to oh. fucking deal with as dungeon masters you think i need to be able to read your every single move as well that is the definition of a player who wants to win that's a definition in my opinion, yeah, my yeah, yeah. opinion. you want me to plan my combat plan my narrative and also plan for every single move that you're gonna make and if i don't and it's too easy you get upset yeah i should try find that i should try find it again oh my god. I, I should try find oh my it. god i really mean it it was like a it's... really really like <sighs> niche small thing yeah like it's... but the dude the dude's just fucking horrible. flinging dice at the yeah, dungeon master throwing awful. dice say, oh you fail yeah. oh i succeed oh god it was terrible oh my oh, god it was awful oh god <laughs> all right pain pain personified (laughs) this next one is a first time player that wants to play any evil alignment yeah play a campaign or two and then we'll see the thing is i can't say this is a red flag because i get it yeah i think this is a very unintentional this is an unintentional mistake yeah that it's cool to play the yeah of course the secret evil guy of course it's like it's the reason why you want to play the lone wolf it's the reason why you want to play the lawful good paladin who just wants to shit on everyone's fun yep there's a reason why people want to play the evil character yeah because it's exciting yeah but it is in execution so fucking hard, hard so to do hard, so hard like to you for you to be evil and not just be an asshole and to not like sabotage the group to not betray the group to not put the group in like bad situations yeah, as yeah, well yeah. and and the thing is it can totally be done by the it way it can totally be done totally. by somebody with experience and someone who knows when to drop it yeah. and leave it yeah for that moment yeah it's so hard to and, do. You know, and honestly, what OP says here, play a campaign or two and then we'll see. I think that is actually a really fair... That's, that's a really fair way to go about it. Yeah. And I'm not saying... You can't? No, no, no I'm not saying new players can't. You absolutely think, certainly can. You just need to be aware of how difficult it is. It, it is difficult. And, and you think, have to be aware of sacrificing some things for your character to get along with a group, right? That's it. It's like, you can be evil... It's like the whole lone wolf. Like, 
You can be a lone wolf, but you need to trust the party. Yeah. You can be evil, but you can't be evil all the time to yeah, the party. Yeah, exactly. You can have evil worldviews, like, I just hate all rich people, and yeah. they, I'm going to kill them. Yeah. And if I come across a rich person, I'm actually going to kill them. Yeah. And it's just yeah. like, okay, fair enough. Yeah. But somebody in the party is rich, it's like, that can't yeah. take and, root there. And honestly, it just can't. even something like that, you know, y- with something like that, you could easily put the party in really bad situations yeah. by, by going for that. So I I actually think with the alignment system for new players, it makes everything really black and white. Yeah. When it's never black it's and never. white. Right? Like evil doesn't mean I hate you all and I'm not going to work with you. Yeah, and I'm going to kill you while you sleep. Yeah, type it's like thing. evil is different. Yeah, evil like, could mean selfish. Evil could mean selfish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah like I get it. Th- there's there's it's so hard i i could never play an evil character i think i would struggle i am i'd like to think that we're quite strong role players yeah um but i still think i would struggle i would because i don't think i'd get get out what i love from the game i love you know getting to know the party and getting beginning to trust them and And have like form strong relationships form strong relationships and form strong bonds and like do things for each other and help each other and stuff like that i'm the same with npcs as an evil character i'm not saying you can't do this no no because you can of course because you can of course but like there's going to be times where the party doesn't trust you yeah. there's going to be times where the party question you as yeah. a person yeah yeah and i yeah. think it's just tough yeah it is tough it is tough and you know like evil can just be lying to npcs yeah. having an underlying motive when yeah. it comes to doing things to this goal in my backstory yeah oh gosh i need to get to this place these people are going to help me get there i'm going to use them but then you have the whole oh actually i really care for them yeah and then your alignment almost shifts yeah exactly but go. it's hard to do it's so hard to do for a first-time player especially i feel like it does it makes things so black and white when it's not and that's not to say you can't no because you certainly can you certainly can and i think yeah i think just saying to her like you can do this if you want to if you truly have a desire to play yeah, an evil yeah, character yeah, you yeah. can just know these are some of the things that you might run into uh, yeah. and i don't want you to exclude yourself because totally. i think that's what you will do by playing an evil character totally. time, is you will exclude yourself totally. from the party and not be in all the fun antics that the party might be doing yeah totally. all the fun moments because you're trying to be evil yeah and you know as well as that i think for dms <sighs> who have new players who want to try this i think a really important question is why yeah like why? try get to the bottom of why this player wants to play like an evil character why they think evil is is a good uh is a good blanket statement for their yeah. character, you know? Maybe they're just seeing, oh, evil, go, oh, yeah, my oh, character's cool. mean. Evil's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know it's what like I mean? You can still be a little bit evil, yeah. but not hit the party. Totally, like that. absolutely. And you can, you know, want to, I don't know, find this secret evil tome that a lich has told you to go and yeah, get yeah, yeah, to yeah. gain all knowledge and power and stuff like that. And then at the last moment where the group's going to destroy it, you try and keep it. And then it creates this cool thing. But you didn't need to be an asshole the whole time up to that moment. No, yeah, totally. To have that backstory. I think evil, there's a lot of connotations of like betrayal as well. Not always, obviously. But, you know, in my opinion. Yeah. And um, it's just hard to do. And do you want to know what? Like, if you can pull it off, fair fucking totally news. oh my like, god absolutely fair on you absolutely i wish but, i i wish i could i i would love to try it one time but i do think as a new player i wouldn't say it's a red flag because i don't think no they, i don't think it's because i don't think thing. they truly know no, no. why it's yeah, hard totally. to do I agree. and why it's not wrong but why it's why it's probably not the best option. i completely agree yeah totally yeah totally uh right this next one and this is gonna rustle your jimmies and I oh know it is. god <laughs> my jimmies my jimmies uh Players who are unreliable, especially about scheduling. I recently had a player who was no longer in the group who we had to reschedule for twice because they just don't read our group messages until the day of the session. Three times, they also cancelled an hour or less before, leaving me to scramble to adjust my homebrew and encounters. Pretty much my main requirement from players is reliability. Not that rustled. No. Uh, They're not that rustled because. Because the thing is, the reason why it doesn't rustle my jimmies is because I am at the point in my dungeon mastering career where, and I've always been like this. Yeah, I can just adjust on the fly. Yeah, like, yeah I can yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. I can just seem to make it work. Like it's not like a massive deal for me. Yeah, like the thing is, like Josh is a bit of a night owl. Yeah, and you know he like wakes up late, and maybe if he's not feeling well or yeah. something like that, yeah, 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 because he gets sick quite often. Yeah, he does. And uh, like, there's times where it's like half an hour before the session, he's like, "Sorry, guys, I've just yeah. woken up and I can't play." Yeah. But the thing is, we'll still play without Josh. Yeah. If but, there's three yeah. out of the four people, exactly. we'll play exactly. And like, 
I can adjust on the fly in terms of what I need to do. Yeah. So it doesn't really stress me out. You know, do I wish that Josh would tell me more than half an hour before the session? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but th- these things just can't but, be helped. But these things just yeah. can't be helped. And, you know, again, I think it's because we all have an agreement. Like, we all know for certain what what will happen if one person can't make it. You and know? that's a session zero rule. Yeah, totally. Like, I think this person hasn't got a session zero rule in as to say, like, if somebody can't make it, we still play with the rest. Yeah. If two people can't make it, that's when we cancel. Yeah, yeah. And also, I think it's really, really important for Dungeon Masters to be open and honest. When this happens, there's five people at your table and you've planned to have five people. There's now four people at the game. Yeah. You just say, I'm going to do my best to balance everything, but I balanced for five, not four. Yeah. So just for this session alone, bear with me. Yeah. And like, what's yeah. wrong with saying that? We, we also have another rule at the table where you can let us know what you want to do with your character. Yeah. Do you just want your character to just not be there? In which case, that's totally fine. Magically not there. Magically like, doesn't matter. D- magically doing the worm in the background. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like, or like Josh especially, to be fair, all of us are like, oh yeah, here's my character's stats. Here's, here's my character's the sheet. Here's, here's the, the spells. spells I have prepared yeah, for yeah. today. Yeah, Like, control them. And just, just rip it. Yeah. And yeah. you know, like, I will just, you know, if there's a decision between Josh's character and Margaret's character and Josh yeah. isn't there, it's Margaret's character. Yeah. It's just like, it's, it's, it would be unfair for me to just put loads of loads of damage and loads of attacks onto Josh's character yeah. in the combat when he's not there. Yeah, and, and we're respectful of yeah. know, keeping his resources and stuff like Trying that Trying not well. to put him in dangerous yeah, positions. Yeah, exactly, you know? exactly. And it's just like almost like they're not there until we go, oh, does Josh have anything that we could use? And it's just like, oh, and then he's there. Exactly, like, yeah, exactly. I get it, you want it to be realistic, but sometimes by being realistic, you're just making it harder yeah, for yourself. Yeah, Now, I, th- the whole thing of like, oh, we had to reschedule twice because they just don't check our group messages. And now tell they're me, kicked? Like, tell me you don't care. Like, yeah. tell me, tell me you don't care. And you know what? It's even worse when someone just doesn't say anything and just doesn't turn up. Yeah. And then like, it, it becomes a thing where it's like, oh yeah, this person's not going to turn up. And you just like, it's so annoying. Like, sc- we've all said it. Scheduling is the BBG of D&D. 100%. Like, 100%. But, like yeah, I understand that it's frustrating, but did you have a conversation before you kicked them after they didn't turn up twice? I hope so. Like to kick somebody out after two times of not of not being able to make it, in my opinion, is rough. I d- I have no idea. They've just said that they're no longer in the group. That I sounds have- a bit. That sounds a bit much, in my opinion. Like uh, I think you know, two times they don't show up. Okay, let's have a conversation. Why aren't you turning up? Like, can you let me know? in better time and i understand that things don't come up and stuff like yeah yeah. i understand that things come up like we're all adults i get it but you know like and if that's just happened these two times i get it but But there's another three times on top of that as well where they just cancel oh there's five times yeah oh right okay i think you said two times yeah two times they just they they had to reschedule twice because they didn't check the messages and then three times there was when they canceled an hour before the session all right okay that's not okay yeah like you know i thought you i thought you just said it was two times like yeah just just not reading and then just not turning up is, in my opinion, is just not good enough. Yeah, we need I agree. To, we need to respect other people's time. Yeah, I, 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 I have no idea if there was a conversation had yeah. or not. Um, the kind of the point was like like players who are unreliable. Mm-hmm. Um, which is a nightmare. Is a nightmare. And look, like I get it. <sighs> like things do come up, and I understand if things come up like close to the session yeah. and stuff like that. I get it, but. Like, you are playing with a group of other people who've set their time aside to play. Like, the least you can do is respect that. Yeah. The least you can do yeah, is respect that. Yeah, and honestly, that. a lot of DMs, that you know, I don't know. But yeah, from what we know, a lot of DMs, having someone drop out last minute is difficult because they do have to adjust things on the fly. Yeah, and, and struggle to do it. A lot of and people like, do struggle with it. Yeah. The very least you could do is just tell your DM, yeah. right? Just let your DM know. And I also think there's something to be said for, like, if you're... You, care so little to not check the group messages when people are scheduling and you cancel like the the day of yeah. so often That's not okay. like do you even want to play is Sorry, my I, question I, I misheard this yeah i don't yeah do you want to know what my, my jimmy's are rustled actually oh gosh my jimmy's are rustled. Oh, gosh. I, don't, I don't like it oh no yeah like to show a lack of respect to, to a dungeon master as well who's put their time into plan a session to just not fucking bother messaging and then not turning up. Like, look, I know somebody who does this to a dungeon master that I know, and it fucking pisses me off. It pisses me off so much. This is why I thought your jimmies were going to be rushing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, th- I think I misheard it. In, Do you want in... me to read it again? No, 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 no. I understand now. I understand now. Like, yeah, like, just, and then, right, we're all turning up and then sitting down and then being like, well, they haven't shown up. It's just like, that is just so 
unfair on everyone yeah. and the dungeon master because like like we said like to me it's not that much of a like issue if somebody's not there because they can adjust on the fly yeah but a lot of people aren't that yeah, flexible yeah. and nobody should be blamed for not being that flexible yeah. what did you think it said someone else i see <laughs> <laughs> i see okay uh, but no i agree like I, and th- I get i think i missed the fact that they had they they just didn't turn up three more times it's like i get things come up oh i get things come up just before a session sometimes and you have to cancel it's just inevitable it happens to a lot of us like life happens but then just not turning up a bunch more times and not telling anyone because you couldn't be asked to check the group message is not okay yeah yeah not acceptable yeah i i, I hey i agree rustled <laughs> hey, i agree <laughs> i'm rustling my jimmies right now i'm, I'm not gonna lie i'm slightly confused <laughs> about everything just that just happened there but yeah tell your dm yeah if you're, if not, you're not gonna be gonna able to come. make it for whatever reason tell your dm in the best time yeah like give them the best chance but just not communicating at all and then not showing up that's 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 a massive red flag yeah i i totally agree. like i get it if things come up but if things don't come up and you still don't say anything and then you just don't turn up to the session i agree what are you doing i agree like, what I are agree. you doing i agree i agree right this next one is players that don't pay attention when their character isn't actively talking or doing something if they don't care about other players and characters they won't be a good teammate so i agree yeah personally because like we all as players at our table and dungeon master at our table care about each other yeah because you know when our time comes to shine and our backstory is a thing and it's like our moments like we want to be shown the same respect that everybody else does. Mm. Like, I get it. Like, paying attention the whole time is hard. And maybe a really, like, narratively driven, story, backstory focused group isn't for you. Yeah. Because if you don't pay attention to me and my backstory, why the fuck do you think I'm going to care about yours? Yeah. And you know it's what? It's just respect. Like, I, I think this, this is a, a nuanced thing. And it's really important to make the distinction between someone not paying attention and then someone being able to multitask and yeah. do something else mm-hmm. and pay attention true because you know obviously um we've heard so many times from people in the community mm-hmm. uh, that there is a lot of people uh, who on the who are neurodivergent in our community who say like having something to be able like something to stim with yeah. being able to g- go on my phone and do something mm-hmm coloring in uh like listening to music or something helps like, me helps, focus helps you focus helps me actually stay engaged in the session yeah it's like if that's what you're doing <clears throat> fine yeah and I, I think a lot of people could will mistake that as mm-hmm. not paying attention yeah but, so you know just to clarify that but you know i i if if someone is simply just not paying attention because they don't care because it's not about their character yeah like you would be so much better off playing like a like a one-on-one game yeah or, or genuinely playing something like Baldur's gate it's playing so, yeah yeah definitely playing something like Baldur's gate is a great shout like i, th- I it's a nar- it's a collaborative narrative storytelling yeah. game like where we roll dice to d- like determine outcomes we all write backstories the dungeon master makes worlds and npcs and storylines and stuff like that if you're only asked about the moments that you're involved in and nothing else yeah it's just not the game for yeah. you, I don't think. And you know what? Like, uh, I'm sure that also extends to like the DM story as well. Yeah. Right? Oh my like, god, 100. percent And if you're not paying attention to anything that doesn't involve you, that's gonna be like probably 20 percent of the game. Yeah, literally. Like, yeah. Yeah. 20 percent of the game might involve you. Yeah. And there's gonna be but a you large directly chunk. and only you. Yeah. Right? But the thing is, it's like you don't think it involves you, but it could indirectly it could easily, involve you. Yeah, definitely. Like we could turn it on its head to a moment where like oh yeah do you remember when i said that and you're like no i wasn't paying attention because it didn't involve me it's just like well it involves you now motherfucker because i'm asking you man like and and how many times have we heard stories where people like i wasn't paying attention because i wasn't involved in it oh that in my opinion that's not good enough that's just disrespectful i i agree and you know what you said about our table like one of the best parts and what makes it personally so enjoyable for me is meeting all the characters and seeing their backstories grow, seeing the character grow. You know, I, I am just as involved uh, with all the other players' backstories as mine. You know, I, I'm thinking about something that happened in one of the last sessions. Mm. I was 
enthralled. We were all enthralled. And it was it wasn't anything to do with us. It was to do with an NPC. Yeah. He was who's closely linked to another player. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um yeah. we were enthralled because we care and, and we I think we just love the world and each yeah. other's characters. And that's what brings me a lot of joy. And I know that's what brings a lot of a lot of people who play D D joy, right? Yeah, I agree. Like just because it's nothing to do with you doesn't mean there's not a story to be engaged with. Yeah, like, totally. You know, like 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 you just said, like, yeah, that NPC is closely tied to somebody else's character, mm. but you were all there. Yeah. You were all in that moment witnessing, like, th- these things happen to this NPC and this backstory unfold for this NPC mm-hmm. and this story to get wrapped up. It had nothing to do with anyone, really. Yeah. It has something to do a little bit more with somebody else, but you all just had as many stakes into it. But because it's not directly tied to your character, imagine you're not just, paying attention. Imagine if we just didn't listen. Just ripping imagine. subway surfers on your phone. Yeah, yeah like that—that that is is genuinely such a red flag. I reckon, <laughs> uh, like that's probably one of my biggest pet hates. Yes, people just not paying attention not, because not they paying, don't care. And they're not paying attention. It's just like and not respecting each other. Yeah, it's just like imagine you that person who doesn't want to listen to anybody else as soon as the dm starts to talk to you everybody picks the phone out everybody just goes to the toilet everybody just goes for a cigarette or something like that because oh it's your bit you don't listen to ours so we're not gonna listen to yours you'd be devastated yeah totally i just feel like we should put out what we want to receive i completely agree and other people other people you know want you to get invested in their backstory just as much as they want you to get invested into yours yeah like just show each other the respect that you would like to be shown i completely agree that is such a red flag to me that is such a yeah, red flag it to really me as well. really really is. probably my worst i think yeah uh right this next one trigger warning okay and not safe for work answer but sa i either kick them out immediately if i'm dming or i leave if i'm a pc and the dm lets them roll for it no argument get that shit out of here roll for it yeah man okay. why are we wrong for it like man you just hit it with a brandon anytime this comes up what are your intentions with this yeah t- totally and this by the way on on this thread specifically all of these came from this thread there were so many that said exactly this like th- which by the way good thank thank god that, that is that, it's just an immediate kick totally but like man the fact that so many people said it because they've probably experienced yeah, it in game totally shows rough. how often it happens in game it's just and fucking weird man to pair with this as well there was the horny bard trope yeah. right where the bard would be like, "Oh yeah, I wanna, I wanna fuck the dragon," yeah, and like, and and everyone else as well, by yeah, the yeah. way. And like, I feel like it's it's a it's like a pyramid, and the horny bard fits in there somewhere yeah, 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 I agree. with all I agree. of this as well. I agree, I agree. And you can you can play the romantic bard, of course. You can play the silver tongued bard, of course. But it's just like, not everyone wants their game to be that sexualized yeah and you know what if you all agree hey yeah where this is going to be a game where sex is involved mm-hmm. and everyone goes great cool then go ahead yeah absolutely yeah. Go but if ahead. that's not disgusting and you're trying to do it all the time yeah it can get so uncomfortable yeah like i've realized as i've gotten older like overt sexiness like people being overtly sexy and it just personally gives me the egg <laughs> cut to me being like oh my god no and but it's all like the ugly npcs hey hey yeah Rome, like yeah but there, there's, there's always <laughs> a know, level yeah, of like tongue in cheek and a yeah, bit of a joke in that, and i'm totally yeah, fine yeah, with yeah, that yeah, yeah i know I like agree. and it, that's just that's just who i am yeah that, that's it's fair just, and that's fair that's valid, it's just yeah. like overt sexiness and just trying to be sexy like all the time just kind of gives me the ache. That's fair. And it's that's, just, that's it's fair. just rough yeah that's fair that's fair uh and that's just that's just what i think but i think like SA is unacceptable no matter what. Es- like, is just unacceptable. Yeah. And- like, if you ever try that, I'm stopping the game. I'm asking you to pack your stuff up and, and leave. Yeah, totally. And I'm going to sit there and watch you do it yeah. until you've left my house, got in your car, and drove- driven out my street. And then we'll continue the yeah. session. Yeah. Man. And, and you know what? Again, I, I know this doesn't need to be said, especially for you guys, but having sex in D&D does not equal SA. Like, being okay to touch on those adult topics is totally, totally, fine, totally yeah. fine some people really really enjoy it but i had it in my last session all consenting yeah i had it i had it where there was a little bit of fear to black sexy yeah. time between two npcs yeah and you know it was just showing like a romance like blossoming and yeah. turning into a family and yeah. stuff like yeah. that yeah 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 and like that's fine 
that's fine. Like we can touch yeah. on those adult topics if you want to. And, you know, as long as we respectfully do it to the degree that our party wants, like, yeah, I'm not going to sit there and talk about how they fucking bonked. Yeah. I'm just ripping a fucking fade to yeah. black. But, like, even then, even then, like, that's okay, but that's so separate from SA. And, oh, yeah, and yeah. It's, yeah. it's yeah. like the whole, you can play, for example, like, oh, my character's an escort. Yeah. But just because my character's an escort does not mean that they SA have is involved. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It does not mean that that's ever okay. And yeah. I think... That's kind of like the the slope that yeah. disgusting people go down uh, because they want to, I don't know, live out a fantasy. Yeah. They don't respect people around and them. They think because it's not real, it's acceptable. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly. just like, it's just not. Yeah, I agree. Anyone, anyone who tries to essay anyone. Immediate kick. Immediate. Immediate, immediate. kick. Immediate kick. And I'll probably warn a bunch of people that I know who play D&D absolutely. just to never play with Same, them. yeah, absolutely. I think mean, that's the thing. You're just going to get yourself such a fucking cripplingly bad reputation yeah, where nobody good, wants to play with you. Good. And you deserve it. Yeah. Like, you fucking 100% deserve it. If you try and do that, I'm fucking telling everyone yeah. that you did it and I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I'll name you. I don't care. Yeah. I am asking you to your face why you're doing that. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you to leave and never come back and never talk to me yeah, again. And I'm telling everyone who knows you that you Every did single this. person who knows you, first name, last name, telling exactly yeah. who you are. Because I don't want them to play with you. Because I don't want anybody to be put in that position that you're trying to put them yeah. in. Yeah, and you know what? I know in the horror stories, uh, we 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 don't touch on things like SA as much as we did in the in the beginning. In the beginning. In the beginning. Uh, because the thing is, again, it's like ninety percent of horror stories that we see yeah. it happens so it often, often, and it happens so often to women and femme presenting people 100%. and it and it's fucking awful it's fucking horrendous yeah that is absolutely th i think that's a, more than a red flag i think you need to get yourself some help yeah i, totally I think agree. you honestly need to go and get you need, you need to think about why you're speak doing to this. somebody and mm -hmm. try and figure out why you think that's okay yeah. and why you want why there's a want and a desire to do that yeah oh because it's funny I think because i think it's i think it's actually quite dangerous yeah it is dangerous i think it's dangerous that you want that and that there's a fantasy yeah to want to try and play that out and then you going oh it's just a joke why is it a joke why to is you? it a joke to you? why because is it it's a not joke? a joke to i would say a large amount of people yeah totally yeah absolutely that is beyond a red flag that's that's beyond a red flag yeah and I, I, I and you know again there was loads of people saying this and it yeah. has to be said it yeah it has, has to be, be said because it's so prevalent yeah it is it's it so really prevalent is. so so many people have been subjected to it you know in and out of game which yeah. is just not okay it isn't it is not it is not and we love our femme presenting and females in the community and we understand that it's never been a particularly great place for you to get involved which fucking stinks yeah. and we don't want that for you we want you to feel comfortable and welcome here. Because it's a comfortable and welcoming space 90% of the time. Mm, mm -hmm. And it's just these fucking hor few horrible people who make you feel unsafe. Yeah. And it's not that. This is exactly the opposite. This is a space where you're supposed to be able to feel comfortable. Yeah. Ex just fucking let go of everything in your life and just be a fucking fairy who's wandering around <laughs> in the Feywild <laughs> and who becomes the captain of a ship who yeah. then slays a king. And it's just like... We do it because we just want to escape. And, like, you're bringing things into the game that are just so unacceptable. And you want to know what? I hate yeah. you. Yeah, no, I agree. I hate you. I agree. And, you know, for anyone who wants to, who's going to intentionally misunderstand what we're saying, obviously, this happens to men as well. This happens, oh, yeah. this happens to everyone. It happens to everyone. It happens to everyone. But the majority are Is women. Yeah, yeah, female and female yeah. present people. Yeah, it's it's so you know. Of course, it happens. To it happens to men and like everyone. One hundred percent. Like um, if it's you know, and if it's happened to you, as a man or a male presenting person, you're no less important. You're no less thought of in our eyes. It's not about who. It's about the fact that it happens. Yeah, exactly. Exactly is is, is the problem. And if that has ever happened to you in a game, or you have seen anything like this, just know. You can leave. Yeah, just leave. Yeah. Just pack your stuff away and leave. Totally. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can ask the dungeon master if they can kick them out, and if they're not going to kick them out, just pack your stuff away. Yeah, leave. totally. Because, yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. unacceptable. And uh, you should beyond probably, a red flag. Probably should just tell everyone, you should probably do the same, by the way. Yeah. Because this isn't a safe space for any of you. Yeah, beyond a red flag. Totally. Right, the next one. You know what? I've got a lot. Oh, sorry. I, I've, I've got a lot here. We may not be able to get through all of them. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Uh, this next one is, recently found a new red flag where one player at the table spent the session trying to... Oh, my God. Oh, gosh. She's a bit burpy. 
She's uh, burping. Oh, burping, chirping. Uh, trying to tell other players what their characters should be doing. They would try to justify it by saying it's what their character would do or argue if the other PC didn't agree. I've never experienced another PC trying to railroad the party like that and they are controlling the whole team like in a video game. Maybe a main case of char- main character syndrome. Yeah, ugh, man. Like, the thing is, I get offering advice. Yeah, totally. I get offering your opinion. Like, there might be something that you understand that they don't understand that Absolutely. they should probably understand here that would make their life far easier if they knew. Yeah, maybe they just forgot something about an yeah. ability. And the thing is, you can gently remind somebody of something. Josh does it all the time. Josh remembers a lot about other people's characters. Yeah, yeah. He's got a really good memory yeah. for like tactically m- magic items, yes. abilities, yes. things that people can do. Like he sees it once and he locks it away in his brain. Yeah. And then like there's circumstances where he's like, hey, just so you know, you've got this. And, you know, that gentle reminder isn't telling somebody what no, to do. No, God, no. Like, and, you know, there's times where new players maybe don't understand that oh, you got a healing potion. And by the way, it's a bonus action and you've yeah. got a bonus yeah, yeah, action yeah, yeah, left. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Just like that's not telling somebody what to do. It's gently reminding people who maybe have forgotten things. Totally, totally. For their best interest. Absolutely. And then there's, <laughs> hey, you should probably do this yeah, because it's like, the best thing to do. Oh, you know what? I even think like being like, heal me. Heal me. Like, heal me. Heal hey, me. heal me. Hey, Sage, heal me. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Only problem with playing Sage and Valorant. Yeah. Yeah. No shit. Just, just duelists who get instantly clapped being like, hey, heal me. Heal yeah. me. Hey, heal me. Yeah. You're going to have to bag for it. Yeah. Hey, sorry. You're gonna, if you want me to heal, you're going to have to bag for it. You're going to have to bag for it. And also, just so you know, you're muted. Yeah, also, so I'll I never hear, hear you. you. <laughs> so just bag for me. Hey, can't hear you. Uh, but yeah, like being like, this is the person who's like, I'm the party leader. Yeah. And being like, oh, yeah, okay, sorcerer, you're going to do this. Uh, on your turn, you're going to do that. And I, there is absolutely people out there who are like that. Biggest red flag. Do you want to know what? Couple of boulders get. Couple yeah, of boulders get yeah. where you will have full Control over autonomy everything. over exactly. every member of the party. You can make decisions for every single person. There's no way that what you want to happen isn't going to get done. He's got his foot in his mouth. <laughs> Sorry about that. Dog's foot out of mouth now. Dog, whole foot in mouth. Um. Yeah. Like. Oh yeah. You. Uh. You should cast this. Then I'll run over here and do this. And yeah. then you do this. It's just like, hey, you. You're playing your character. That's your decision to make. When it's my turn, if you've got anything that you could recommend, would be a good idea. I'm alright to hear it. Some people don't even want to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. And you should probably go and you go in and say, I. I don't know if this is okay, but I just a recommendation something like this. And then if they say no, then don't do it again. But otherwise, shut Yeah, up. shut up. Like, it's even n- if... You're not playing every character. And you know what? Even if you think someone's making potentially a bad decision, <laughs> the thing is, th- there's kind of two sides of this. But if you're like, um, for example, someone's a barbarian, they don't reckless attack, and you're like, they should be recklessly... Like, rec- you're flanked rec- anyway. Like, you're gonna, people are going to have advantage on you. You might yeah. as well recklessly. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's no harm in saying something like that. Being like, oh, you can reckless attack, by the way, like, and, and all of that. But then being like, you need to rage now. Like, that. I feel like that's the difference. Yeah. But e- even then, to a degree, being like, you could rage. You could rage. Like, I think it's all about how you do it. Yeah, right? it's, it's, it's like telling people what to do and offering gentle, like pointers and tips and reminders yeah. are two different things but just simply telling people what to do yeah it's a game where we make characters and we get to role play them yeah. and we get who to are live real out living things who, who are who like we get to live out fantasies and stuff like that if you just have complete control over mine it's just like i'm just not playing the game yeah so yeah I, yeah and you know what this even extends to things like role play being like no you're not going to talk to that npc like, shut up i'll do what i yeah. want or being like you should go to the church, you know. Like, oh, you're a paladin. You should go to the church. You, you should go pray today. And yeah. it's like, man, that like, you know, obviously just, those just are all like go play Baldur's Game. Yeah, just I, go I agree. play. Go uh, go have a one on one game where you do get to control. Yeah, totally. Yeah, like I that. agree. I but agree. it's like clearly a party dynamic doesn't work for you. Yeah, because you can't seem to integrate yourself and play fair with everybody. General reminders are fine. Telling people what to do as soon as you tell people what to do yeah. with their actions and their fucking role play. It's an immediate red flag. Yeah, totally. I agree. I agree. Fuck off. (laughs) Right. This next one is DMs who have never read the DMs guide and any other books and somehow think they're better DMs because of it. Why do you care? Why do you care? Like, Like, I do believe 
that you'd probably fare better knowing a basic amount of the rules. Yeah. If you're going to run a D and D five E game, yeah, yeah, you should probably know like a bit about the system. Yeah, I do. I do believe that is that is the crack. But oh, limpy man, oh, oh he's limped in here. Oh. Uh, but do I need to know every single thing about the game? No. Is Google a thing? If I maybe don't understand something, like yes. Does it make you a better or worse DM? Doesn't really matter. Like yeah. it really doesn't matter. Yeah, you like, know what? Th- this I think this kind of goes into elitism. It's a gatekeep of being like. Well, I haven't read the DM's guide and actually I'm a better DM because of it. This is like the whole thing of like modules, right? This is on the same spectrum of being like, I would never run a module. I only do homebrew stuff. I think it's both. I think it's both sides. Like the fact that you think you're a better DM because you haven't read it. You okay? Listen, the fan is blowing his smelly bum. The fan is blowing my dog's smelly bum hole towards me. No. And it's vile. It's okay. It's turning around now. Thanks, Bully. Like, oh, he's very cute. Uh, to me, I'm a better DM because of this. I, the fact that you think you're a better DM because of anything, is, I just don't get the mentality. Yeah. I just don't get the mentality, personally. Th- th- this is the whole, like, oh, I got a 100% on the exam and I didn't study. Like, and it's like, good well, for good, good for you. Good for you. It's like an elitism being like, well, I'm I'm better because I didn't have to work as hard to get here. The fact that you think, the problem is the fact that you, you think that you're better than anybody else. Like, why does it matter? Every DM is different. Every DM is going to do things differently. Like some DMs are going to work better knowing all the rules because that'll put their mind at ease some people might get bogged down by the rules yeah and like reading them might actually like ruin their game to yeah. an aspect but the problem is it's when you say that you're better than somebody else because of something it's yeah. just like who gives a fuck how good you are it only matters how much your table enjoys it, it, that's it and it's all subjective like, like you know like you're an incredible dm we love your dming for my table exactly there's, but- there's a chance you'd go for someone else and they wouldn't enjoy your style of dming i'd I'd go and dm for a like crunchy uh like six combat a day like dungeon crawling game i'd be dreadful because i'm just not that type of dm yeah and like my dming knowledge has fuck all to do with that it's dming style and i i genuinely think you, you said it best this is on the scale of gatekeeping it's being like it's the idea that there's like a secret sauce to, DM, to DMing. The idea that, oh, I'm just I'm just naturally better. I didn't even have to read the book to be mm-hmm. a good DM. And it, it's, 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 a, it's a form of gatekeeping, yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah. And it, it's a form of shaming other people who, by the way, the DM's guide, great resource. Great resource. Have I read it completely front to back? No. Yeah, but it's a great resource. But it's a great resource. And it's there it's for, for a reason. Learn, yeah. Like, what's the point in these things existing? Uh if you're not supposed to read them yeah, you yeah. know like it's a great resource it's a great and don't resource. ever let anyone comparison is a thief of joy 100 we all know this don't let anyone tell you that they're a better dm or you're worse because of xyz because of a certain because of a book that has been read it's yeah just like, it means nothing. It's like it, it means it means nothing because like i said somebody might read the dmg and be like man i feel so much more confident yeah. now and then somebody would read the dmg and go man i feel like I, my world's been rocked and yeah. I'm, i've been doing things wrong i'm boggled and it's There's just so like but options. your table enjoyed the way that you were running your yeah, game anyway totally. so why like the, the fact that you've gained more knowledge totally. is pointless it's who fucking cares how good of a dm you are the only the only fucking people who it matters that think you're a good dm is your table yeah and you know Full stop hey get some hubris <laughs> yeah get some fucking hubris hey. like <laughs> like i get like being confident is great absolutely. and like power to you absolutely like be, hey you know, I'm a good dungeon master. Yeah. Hey, awesome. Why do you have to why do you have to bring it to everybody else? Like I'm a better dungeon master than you because I've read this. It's just like well, shut the or fuck up. Or because I haven't read this. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, and like and the thing is, I I believe and the thing is it doesn't really matter what I fucking believe, because you are you and you are your own person and you have like lived your own life and I'm just here to offer some advice. I think that having a basic knowledge of the system that you're running, knowing everything you don't need to yeah having a basic knowledge is probably a good thing and might help you yeah like overcome some situations i agree i, I absolutely at agree. the same time as is, is there's tables that don't give a fuck about the rules they totally. just fucking want to make it up it's just exactly. like then don't fucking read anything yeah. doesn't matter agreed 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 yeah i think i think that is a huge red flag anyone who says that they're better or you're worse at something for whatever reason 
because you have or haven't read I, that, certain like material. That's just self projection. Shut that's up. just being insecure and self projecting. I think. Shut up. Right. This is the penultimate. <gasps> this is the second to last. The penalty. Uh, getting cagey and defensive when I ask questions, clarifying their intentions. That red flag could mean a lot of things. In the better case, it means they played with an adversarial DM and learned to keep things close to their chest so the DM wouldn't ruin it. Still a red flag, but all it means is taking some extra time with them to deprogram them a bit. No, I'm not here to mess with you. I really am here to help facilitate your actions in a fair and plausible way. In other cases, there is never a group healthy reason for wanting to keep secrets from the DM. Like, do they think that if they don't tell me what their plan is, that after a few rounds when it becomes apparent, both what their plan is and that it isn't going to work that i'm just going to sunk cost fallacy it and give it to them anyway mm-hmm. i people like that will hate me yeah will hate me because i am 100 percent a dungeon master who it's like i want you to succeed yeah yeah like whatever it is as long as you know it's not to the detriment of the rest of the party yeah like i want you to succeed yeah and me knowing has no bearing because just because I know doesn't mean I'm going to change anything. Yeah. uh, yeah. I'm not going to change anything in my game and Mm -hmm. the way I would do something because I know what your plan is. Yeah. If you think that you think I'm against you and I'm not, Yeah. I want you to succeed all the time and me knowing will probably, Right, give us a second because he's having a roll. He is having a roll. He's having a roll. And last time he had a roll. I'm sure you saw in last last episode. He ruined the camera angle. Where this little guy... This little roly I, I wish you could see him rolling. He's his self. Like, me knowing, you thinking me knowing is to a disadvantage of you. Yeah. You've got the wrong idea of what I'm yeah. here for. I, I, I completely agree. And you, honestly, I think Opie actually summed it up perfectly. This could come off the back of, like they said, an adversarial DM. And 100%. they're like, oh, the DM's going to try and thwart yeah. whatever I do. So I'm going to keep it to myself. But... I agree. If you don't share your intentions fully, the thing is, there's a difference between wanting to do things that surprise your DM and take them off guard. Yeah, in a and combat. Then, and then plotting against them. Yeah, plotting right? against them. Or, yeah. or, you know, maybe not even necessarily plotting against and them. It's, but... it's, and it is that mindset of like, if you know, you'll find a way to counter it. And I don't yeah. want that. It's just yeah. like, I'm not, if, if, do you want to know what? If you told me and I found a way to counter it, I'm a, dr- in my opinion, I'm a dreadful dungeon master because I'm not doing my job of wanting you to succeed yeah, and, and facilitating storytelling yeah. i think you know the, and the, i think that actually kind of ties into the conversation of railroading right like i think when your dm is so unwilling to let you try and do things and you think that they're going to try and counter what you do that that's a form of railroading i, th- yeah, I think yeah. i think as well i really like this mindset of <laughs> like decoding like I need just a little bit of time with you yeah. to just make you see yeah, that, that, that I'm not against you. You don't need to keep anything from yeah, me totally, because that's totally. not why I'm here. Yeah. And like, it's, it's a, it's a red flag, but it's not a red flag that can't be changed. Yeah. Like you tell me all that's going to happen is when it comes to fruition, like I can at least be even prepared to help you. Yeah. And you know what? Again, if, if you kind of clued in it's, it's like op says here like i'm here to help facilitate what you're doing exactly in a fair and plausible way like if you're clued in you can have that moment to think and be like okay what is the best way to go about yeah, yeah. this 100%. in a fair way mm-hmm. and a plausible way but if it's just sprung on you i think that can sometimes leads to um you know like a defense mechanism where dms are like oh fuck oh shit yeah, yeah, yeah. oh god what do i do here yeah, yeah, you know yeah. and like i said it's a knee-jerk reaction and i think that that can then be like oh i'll have to counter it because i wasn't prepared exactly it's just like you're setting both of us up for failure yeah by not like letting me in yeah yeah and yeah i think like it's a red flag but it's a red flag that can be changed like, i completely I understand agree. that you've had a dm in the past that yeah. wants you to fail yeah. and you know every time you've opened up about your plans like they've had a like a counter for it it's like and i'm not here to do that like yeah. i'm here to help you yeah. i want you to succeed if you've got cool like plans that you're excited for i want you to live those out because yeah. that's what the game's for yeah. and we can live them out together yeah and it's going to be super fun but also there is the type of player who just wants to one-up the DM. And this goes all the way back round to the very first one of people 100%. who want to win D&D. They want to win D&D. Because they want to pull one over on the DM. Yeah. They want to feel like they've kind of, uh, what's the word in chess? 
Checkmate. Che- they've checkmated Hit him you. with a checkmate. Hit him with a checkmate. Hit him with a checkmate. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what are you going to do now? Yeah. I've got all of your hands <laughs> we're, tied. We're in the plane of energy. <laughs> we're in the positive energy plane <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As I throw my dice at you across the table. Uh, and, you know, there is absolutely totally players like that. 100 yeah. percent but uh i i think the most important thing is that the dm wants to be able to do it in a fair and plausible yeah, way 100%. and you know you boil it down to hey the parties the adventurers the heroes you could say the dm plays the bad guys sometimes yeah. it's the good guy versus the bad guy and there has to be decisions made on both sides that are going to counter one another mm-hmm. but it's understanding that when you do things as the bad guy, you're not doing it as Jack the Dungeon Master. No, it's not me. You're doing it as um, Stinky Von Farthead. Yeah, the, Stinky the, Von Farthead, the, the, my favorite the, villain. The bad guy. My favorite villain. You know? My reoccurring villain in all of my campaigns, <laughs> Stinky, Stinky Von, Von Farthead. Farthead. But and that's it. It's like, I think there's... understanding that. I think there's a f- there, there are a number of players, sadly, who who can't see that separation. Absolutely. They and can't, there's, yeah. They can't see that, like... I'm not the bad guy. Yeah. My bad guys are the bad guys. Yeah. And then there are some dungeon masters who use the their bad, bad guys guy to, to do bad to do things. It. Exactly. And it's just like, and they ruin it for us. To, uh, it's like, 100%. I want to make my villains bad. Yeah. I want to make them relatable yeah. in a way because, yeah. you know, like they want things and they want to do things yeah. and they yeah. have like motives and reasons. But yeah. at the same time, they're going to be bad. Yeah, Otherwise, and, you're not going to want to stop them. And we personally, as, as your table have that trust in you that we know you're not doing things to be awful yeah. when the thing is you know we have a joke about it and we're like oh how can they b- be doing this how can they possibly uh, you, know, that's, this? you know but that's all in good jest and we, we we have that trust and you have that trust with us as well yeah that- and like recently like i did a i did a you know a dangerous thing as a dungeon master mm-hmm. like it was the odds were stacked completely and utterly against you and you know but i wasn't scared of doing it because i knew that you'd understand that they're doing it because they're bad yeah and you know like but the thing bad guys need to do those bad things to feel bad Mm -hmm. to feel real they're working behind the scenes Mm. they are plotting they are scheming they are trying to beat you they are trying to one-up you yeah but it never feels bad because you know that it's not me it's them yeah and you know what we had someone who um we used to be we used to be friends with not anymore um they used to come to you regularly for D advice uh, because they were a dm and i remember they were like yeah i really want to i really want to give it to him i i really want to fuck them over with this yeah. and i remember you being like why do you want to fuck them like, over what is like, the desire to fuck them over? yeah and they like, they used the phrase like uh i really enjoyed seeing them struggle and it's like then you shouldn't be you a shouldn't DM. be a dungeon master hey Spoiler, you shouldn't be a you DM. You shouldn't be a dungeon master. And you said that. And they were like, oh, I didn't mean it like that. It's like, then what did you mean? Like, what did you mean then? It's like, I, like, and I get wanting them to, to, to feel low yeah. at a point. Like, players feeling low, when they feel high at the end, yeah. it's like, I, we climbed the mountain. A- and it's We challenge. got there. And it's like, yo, but it's like, f- fucking people over, mm. fucking your party over and making them struggle and stuff like that. And reveling in in them struggling is different to you know like the bad guy winning at some point totally because they have to yeah like but they don't always have to but it does sometimes feel good when that happens there's a difference between what wanting them to struggle and wanting your bad guy to succeed totally totally there's yeah. they're, they're two different things yeah. and i think that that person look that person was just a fucking horrendous dungeon master yeah totally. and ended up being a horrendous, a horrendous person, person turns out and i'm so glad that they're no, no longer in my life but yeah. you know but it just shows you like the difference yeah I it agree. just shows you the difference i would never say man i want you guys to really fucking feel shit yeah like i yeah, want you to totally. feel bad but and i want to i want to win you would say i really want to challenge you yeah i want to challenge you and i want my i want my bad guys to feel real and feel strong and feel smart and feel like dangerous yeah but I don't want to feel you. I don't want to make you feel bad. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. That's a huge red flag. Huge yep. red flag. Yep. Totally. Oh my God. It's such uh, a red flag. Again, you know, I know we kind of got away from what OP said there, but yeah, you know, like the, the whole like keep the, keeping things, if it's from the intention of being like, I'm going to fuck the DM over. Oh God. Boring. Give so boring. Give I'm not, I'm not against you. I want you to succeed. We're yeah. doing it together. You're telling a story and I'm the narrator. Yeah. And yeah. all I'm doing is telling you what is going to be in your way to get there yeah totally yeah absolutely right the last one 
This is it. This is the last one. I had to cut. I had to cut a few out. Oh my god, you had <laughs> so I many. I had so many. Oh, wow. You know what? I think it's because I'm like, oh, sentence small. Yeah, sentence small. Sentence but it's just small. Like, that, does, that doesn't matter when you're serial <laughs> when you're yappers. yappers. Yeah. When you yap about Certified everything yappers, yeah. and go off on tangents yeah. about every yeah. topic. I'm like, oh, sentence, sentence really small. Sentence small. <laughs> so, you know, quick. <laughs> so, this last one. <laughs> when you watch the player roll an eight... And then they use their finger to turn it to a 16 and then look up at you and pretend like you didn't just clearly see them fudge their dice roll. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's out. the whole like, oh, picking it up and turning it. Oh, it's like, oh, it it's like lands and then you go, oh. <laughs> and the DM's looking at you and you're like, it's a 16. <laughs> oh. oh, you're like, oh, let me show you it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> so that like that the age old like quick pick yeah yeah yeah, is, yeah, yeah. like you yeah, roll yeah, yeah. it and, so you, can't, and, and you go oh my god oh, it's a gosh. 19 oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> like no it wasn't <laughs> that's what, like cheaters red flag yeah <laughs> because i think i do know what brilliant way to tie it in it, yeah. it ties Winning. into i want to win D&D. yeah it does it it's does. like f- you want to you want to wedgie the ch- the guy who's running the like service at the church it's just like the fact that you fail <laughs> is hilarious yeah 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 it's like it's so funny and it's gonna create this huge moment but you just are so desperate to succeed because you're so scared of failure it's just yeah. like i get it i understand that some people don't want to fail but f- failure isn't always bad i get the whole narrative of failure isn't fun and mm, stuff like that but at the mm. same time it's just like i think i think you're trying too hard to win and it's like like I understand missing a hit in combat stinks. Isn't fun. I get, I get it. it. I get it. But that's what happens when you play a dice-based game. And I do get the narrative of like uh, thinking that failure is fun is a like toxic mindset and totally, stuff like I that. Totally, I understand. It's like that. the to- there's toxic I toxic do. positivity. Yeah. But the thing is, it's just like sometimes when you don't roll well, the outcome isn't bad. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. and it's. Do you want to know what? It's so inconsequential. Yeah, totally. Like. You tried to steal a sticky bun and the fucking person slapped your wrists and said that you need to pay for it. It's just like, yeah. the campaign's not fucking over. Yeah. Like, you haven't been bad from the fucking sticky bun restaurant. You're still allowed to eat there. They're just keeping their eye on you. It's yeah. just like, the fact that you failed is so inconsequential. It was just funny. Yeah, it yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah, and like, and again, you know what? I, I don't think we've ever played with someone who intentionally has cheated. Like, no, no, I, I, agree, I agree. But, you know, people make mistakes. Like, yeah, oh my yeah. oh, God, God yeah. I do it all the time. I accidentally add the wrong number. Mm-hmm. I add too much, too little. There's yeah. so many times where I go, it's a 22, and then I go, no, it's not, no, it's, it's a 19. No, it's not, it's a 19. Like, but, you know, like... It happens it ha- all the time. It fucking happens. Man. You and can't, sometimes you like, read your dice wrong. Sometimes when you're rolling with an advantage or disadvantage, you look at the wrong dice. Yeah, it you happens. look at the wrong, wrong dice. Oh, it's like when there's a bardic inspiration dice and yeah, a normal damage dice. Totally. And you, one is adding to your AC and you roll them at the same time. And you're yeah, like, fuck, yeah. I really want the nine. It happens. But like, I I should probably take the three. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like, we make mistakes, but in putting your finger on the <laughs> dice and rolling it to a higher number and being like, oh. <laughs> and you know what is when oh. like you know what we have a thing i'm sure you guys have it where like if a dice is cocked which basically means it's like it's not landed like a hundred percent on a face if I'll, we can put a d4 on yeah, it yeah t- how do you deal with cocked at your yeah table? how do you deal with cocked dice how yeah. do you deal with cocked dice because yeah. we try and put a d4 in it and if a d4 can sit on it it's the number if it can't yeah. you gotta do you want to know it. what i think i'm gonna change that to if there's an obvious number pointing up yeah then you can take that number yeah I think this is like when it's cocked like on its fucking precipice. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, and there's you no can't, obvious. You, you can't. You have to re-roll it. Yeah, yeah. But if it's like cocked like that, and it's just not a sitting pretty, yeah. like, but it's obvious that this is the number that's up. Yeah. I think I'm just gonna say that's the number that you take. Fair enough. From now on. Yeah, fair enough. That's fair. And also, if you fucking drop your dice on the floor <laughs> and it lands on a natural twenty, oh, you don't get to fucking boo. keep it. When you pick your dice up and drop boo. it and didn't even roll it and it lands on a natural twenty, it's just like, no, you need to roll it in the tray. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it's like then then it'll land on a natural 20 and i'll be like no roll in the trail they'll be like oh, <laughs> Although, so unfair. Hey, it was on a natural one and we're like don't i was gonna oh, roll I it don't worry i was well, i didn't roll it there i didn't roll it uh, just like we all have a bit of a little rat in us yeah you just have right yeah, we have right in us we really do you, but, right you know like we would never ever cheat with cheat. a dice roll it's just ever it's just pointless. It is it's, pointless. It's What's just, the point? It's just pointless. It's just like we play a game where the not that the dice tell the story. The dice do determine some outcomes. They do, yeah. Like you know, like we tell the story. They're yeah. just a vehicle to help us find yeah, out what I agree. happens. I agree. And denying that 
is pointless. It's yeah. just like you might as well just not play with the dice. I agree. It's like, and, and that's fine if you just want to play. If you just want to, if you just want to role play. Yeah. Fine. And you know what? The, I this also the, there was obviously a lot of people saying cheating players. Um, but like prevalent online so often especially if you're not using tell. webcams especially if you're not using like a tt a, a tabletop where you actually physically roll the dice in the in the thing you know people are like people lie so much yeah. which i bet they do to which i'm just like what's the point like it's I, so I, tough I, as well like, because like people buy dice because they want to use the dice yeah and like shiny cute math rock that i had fucking commissioned by somebody that's like in theme with my character yeah i get it like but honestly if you're playing online and you're playing with a new group for the first few sessions i would honestly urge you to use the online roller where yeah. you can see the dice rolls i agree like until on D &D beyond, yeah. until we've realized that like failure isn't like a catastrophically bad and stuff like that and we're here for a narrative based game and then we can start using the shiny map yeah box. i agree I agree. In a bit. I agree. Yeah. People who do cheat on their dice rolls, that is a red flag. That's a red flag. That's, hey, hey, that's a hey, red flag. That's hey, a red flag. I'm going to call that a red flag, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, that's a red flag. Well. That's it. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Yeah. Did Did you like it? I enjoyed this. Do you like these Reddit post videos? I love these Reddit post videos. They're the fucking best. Yeah, me too. I like them as well. Because I think they're just so varied. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> like, all all the red flags, that's so much fun. Yeah. That's so much fun. Yeah. And you can keep some of them for the I, next time. I do have more. Yeah. So if you we'll like it, we can, um, we can go over some more. Or yeah, if you yeah, like. uh, maybe we'll open up like a um a form thing uh yeah, you yeah, guys can red send flags. in like red your flags. red flags that i think cool. that would be funny because that's fun. that's what we did on stream and some of the red flags y'all came up with were so, fucking so funny. Good. Let's oh my god they were so, so good. funny yeah i hope you enjoyed it let us know let yeah us know. let us know yeah uh like comment subscribe check out the patreon down below um check out the merch down below patreons get 10 percent off you know what i'm saying um our Hellbound star, Etsy star is down below. You can use code Poplast to get 10% off there. <sighs> Anything else? No. I love you. I love you. The bully loves you. Oh, he does. He does. I hope he didn't knock the camera today. No, he didn't. I can see. It's, it's still fine. <laughs> we've been the Eldritch Podblast, and we're going to see you on Monday. Bye. Bye. And another huge thank you to our patrons for all of your support. A big shout out to our fellow entities. Hoobs. Ariel. Tula, Runarian, Arkham Labs Cosplay, Maddie, Pepsi Woman, Luna, Teddy Saurus, Caspian, Ryan the Giant, 111, J Spot, Ultra Fail, Dallin M, Sleepy, Joe Dragon Lord 2, Alistar, Lawkeeper Society, Ricky B, Danny Phantom, Catherine, Faustkin, Azuriel, Panda Queen Plays, Xylo Boy, Lucas Iapetus, Luna River, Ruined Rivers, thank you again for all your support. And if you too would like to become a patron of the Eldritch Podblast, check the link below. <laughs>